episode 15 of my building black pearl the zhl version for 2021 and i've got a lot to show you and you can tell it's coming along so let me do a brief overview of uh, what the ship looks like and then i'll take a little more time and go into some detail to show you how i got to this point starting at the front you can see i've done some rope work anchors anchor support where the uh, ropes actually come out of the ship. Some of the platforms that will support the dead eyes and go up to the rope ladders. Have that work done. Completed work on the rudder. Uh, made up some of my own little rudder chain work just for appearance. A lot of the uh, Brass work on the back around the statues, windows. I'm preparing to put the masts in place. I've got some of the rope work supports in place. And I think that should give you a pretty good idea of where I'm at on the build. I think it's coming along pretty well. The next thing I'll probably tackle is my electrical work for the lanterns on the back of the ship. And I may start putting the covers on the cannons. And that's going to require drilling some holes into the side of the ship and some rope work because I want them to look like they're functional. I decided at the bottom of this uh, banister or rail for the stairs, the original did have a little pedestal here, but in the process of uh, taking this part and putting it back together, I was going to have to repair it. So I decided to make my own on my little miniature lathe. And although this isn't done, you can see where it's going to work. And I just wanted to point out what I've used. These are going to be the top. They're from some beads that I bought a long time ago when I first started making small ships and I thought they would come in handy for something and I just picked this style the pedestal itself I made on my mini lathe and although I have this on here I've determined that it's easier and works better to use and once you screw that in your block of wood on this little mini vise it clamps right in there. Now this is the leftover piece after I made them, but that holds it in place very well. A lot better than this little screw thing. I need to sand the finish off of this so then I can stain them all and show you the final result. I've been playing around with this rear um, steering mechanism and the instructions say you can just glue it on or they suggest a nail. I think what they mean is some sort of a rod. And I had some real small, I think this is a sixteenth of an inch, and it is a copper tube. There's a real small hole in it, but it was nice and straight. So I decided to try and use that. If you're interested, I picked it up at Hobby Lobby in this packet. It was about $10 and had several sizes in it. And I use them for different things. So I made this to fit. I did carve this out a little bit in the center, and I've also carved this out some. And I'll darken that before I actually attach it. Then on your brass plate, part number five, you get, I think, seven of these. And it looks like they loop around, then you nail them on. So I've got the first one on. Then the next one will actually attach to the ship. So it'll be one of these going the other direction, and that's what will hold it on. It does come with the brass piece, and it does come with the nails. I've had to trim the little nails off. They were a little bit too long. I didn't want them go th going through the other side. I pre-drilled all of these holes because I didn't want to split this wood. And I used a very, very tiny drill bit to pre-drill those holes.
here's the finished look on the rudder and I'll probably hang some chains going to that. I've done that on another ship and I thought it looked pretty neat. And then I've got some finish work to do on it. It doesn't have any of the tongue oil on this part back here. So I'll apply some of that so that the color matches the ship more accurately. Some of you will be happy to know that I was able to unassemble the base of the ship's wheel and get this straight. So I've made that correction and began working on the ship's bell. The bell that came in my kit has a hole so there would be something that would go through it and then it could actually rock back and forth. I ran into a problem in that this piece was not supplied so I just used a, a simple small dowel and because this rod did not come with it I needed a better way to support it than just super gluing it and I didn't want to risk cutting this off so I drilled a micro hole into this dowel rod on each side and then put a little piece of brass rod through there. However when that was put in place the clapper actually drug the ground. So I made a couple little wooden bases for that to to raise this bell stand. So that was one correction or addition that I made to what comes in the kit. To allow the bell to swing I just wrapped a piece of black rope right there and tied it on a little super glue. And now I'll take another piece and do the same thing. Now it's just a matter of snipping off the excess rope. And you can see maybe I put a little knotted pull string onto the bell. So the ship's bell is in place again, not glued, just sitting there. I started out using a black rope for the clapper, but you couldn't even see it, so I switched to a very light colored. In preparation for some more steps to take, these rings that are at the base of the masts, this one is A35, I've determined that there is a little difference in what A35 schematic, which here's A35, and notice there's just one round piece here but if you go to the actual placard it doesn't quite look the same now a35 is one of these two pieces so just be aware because one of these is smaller than the other and i think they're both for masts you just have to determine which one it is when you start getting to uh, this framing you have to kind of search around because it says A40 and A37. A37 is an L bracket. You can't hardly see it there. And actually A40 is just a trim piece. So if you look down in this area, you see the part you actually need. And it is D10 in this photograph. And the trim piece A40, do not put A40 on until you're done with all this rope work. And this is the d10 piece and you'll need access to all of these cutouts and then that piece of trim a40 covers it once you're all set with that another thing to make note of on d11 there are two notches here then there's a space for the cannon and then the rest of the notches because you're going to have dead eyes and ropes going up to the ladder system so pay attention to that, that the two are to the back of the ship. And this is pretty tight. This one will slant back a little bit. This one will slant forward a little bit. So I hope it gives clearance for the cannons. However, in the plans, it looks pretty tight. So that may or may not be an exact fit. On this front platform, same thing. You can see there's a space here. And this is the front of the ship. There are five notches then that space for the cannon, and then three additional notches. So that's something to pay attention to on both sides. It doesn't really state it or show it that well in the instructions. 
Part A37 is this little angle brace, and the longer part goes on the platform. And to save you counting, there are 38 of them. That means there'll be 14 on each side of the ship. The longer section, which is the front of the ship, will have five. The middle section will have four. And the back two sections, the smaller one will have two, and the back one will have three. You have to decide on this one whether to chip off a little piece and put it dead center, or what I did is move it over and uh, just beyond that little niche, because it actually would cover up that little niche that you have there. You might recall that I did gold leaf on the statues while well, I'm doing copper leaf on the anchors and then I will darken these so they won't really look coppery they'll be a real dark color with a slight dark copper hint so this one is mostly done I have to wait till it completely dries and then I'll brush and get rid of any loose flakes of copper that are still on it I thought I would show this technique because this is different than the gold that I use the gold stayed attached to the paper and then you could press it onto the statue. This copper is more of a loose leaf and it's very light and airy. Here's the anchor I'm going to work on and I've already pre-glued it and it's dry. The only thing it doesn't have glue is this one anchor tip. After I finish all of this I'll go back and just uh, finish on that very tip getting the copper off of this and you cannot have any airflow. So if you're near a, a air conditioning or heating vent, you'll need to block it. This is where you use the fan brush. And I'm just going to kind of lay it on top of that very gently and now just this is a very soft brush I'm going to tap it down I'm going to take it all the way around to the other side just wrap it around it can it can meet multiple layers levels because you will brush all of that extra off. It will only stick where the glue is. And again, this very tip is the one that has no glue on it, so I can hold it pretty firm there. Now I can brush off some of the excess. Now some of this I'm going to go ahead and leave on there, and I'm going to let it dry, and then I'll come back, brush it a little firmer, and I'll even use a little bit of a firmer brush as an example on, on the one that's dry. I wanted to feature that so you will see what it looks like before and then after I do the chemical darkening. I've finished the anchors so this is my completed has kind of a coppery look to it. The rope that I'm using the ship comes with this rope for the anchors and this is just a little bit bigger but this is that that tarred twine that I I've talked about before and it has a very good weight and shapeability to it. So I'm going to use that for the anchors. A thing to make note of is there's a very subtle photograph here and you can't hardly see but this is where the anchor rope comes in and out of the ship and it's part B10 and it's these little plugs here. So I'll put that on the ship but that's Hard to see, it's way back in the instructions, page 21. I have found myself going back and forth to different pages because this shows pretty well into the build where I'm going to put that on. So I'm, I'm actually further back in the build than what I am here. Here's the new anchor in place. That's not exactly where I'm going to put it, but it gives you an idea. This is an anchor support. I would need to do more research on that because there needs to be some sort of a mechanism on there, a pulley or something. So I'll work on that. Here's the piece I just was talking about, that uh, B8, and the rope work that I mentioned. 
and I really like how that hangs more of a natural look and I can like I said I can actually bend it a little and kind of stay in that position very happy with that so that's it on segment 15 of the black pearl as always thank you for watching and following along